Hello AP Calculus students, this is Mr. McAllen and today we're going to talk about the mean value theorem. And uh, we're going to talk first about a consequence of the mean value theorem. And basically uh, if we look at this um, problem over here, it says suppose that you are driving a distance of 200 miles in only three hours on a roadway with a 60 mile per hour speed limit. Can you be given a speed limit, a uh, speed ticket, speeding ticket, based upon the data of when you left and when you arrived and how far you went. Well, uh, the bad news is, is you can be. Uh, because at time zero, you are at position zero and you travel 200 miles over the time of three hours. So as a result, it doesn't matter how you may have gone there. What matters is, is that on average, let me just erase that. On average, I'll do it with a blue line. Your slope between, um, you know, your average speed was 200 miles per three hours, which puts you at about 66 and two thirds miles per hour. So um, the mathematics that guarantees that we can give you a ticket is based on the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem basically says this in more mathematical terms. If you have a function that is defined, uh, it's continuous and it's defined on a closed interval. So I'm just going to say from A to B, just drawing an arbitrary interval from A to B. Um, I'm guaranteed, as long as that function is continuous and differentiable, I'm guaranteed that between these endpoints, the slope between the endpoints, the slope of the secant line, I'm going to find that same slope somewhere in the interval at least once. And if you look at the diagram, you can see or imagine that maybe about this point, I have a um, equivalent tangent line slope to that um, secant line slope. So here's the mathematics behind it. Um, what happens is, is if you have, uh, you're looking for where a derivative at an arbitrary point in the interval C, in, I mean in the interval, some arbitrary point C, you take the derivative, it will equal the slope between the endpoints. And this is the formal definition of the mean value theorem. And it basically, uh, as long as you follow the, um, the given information, as far as I need to have a continuous function uh, defined on a closed interval, and within the interval, the function is differentiable everywhere. Um, this is the existence that you will find at least one point where you have a tangent line slope. So let's go on and look at uh, a, an example. And this is typically how we get tested to see if we understand the mean value theorem. Um, we, we're given a function, and they say, does this function satisfy that hypothesis of the mean value theorem? That, if you take the derivative of the function, Will you find um, a derivative, a location for the derivative where the slope between the endpoints um, is equal to that? So what we do is, you know, with this function, we're going to put into the function, um, like f, of, we'll say f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 3 minus 1. So will we get a slope? Uh, here, let me draw a picture. This is basically a square root function, move to the right by one. We're going up to, uh, we're going up to three from one. Now, it's a little out of scale, but so now let me draw that with a little bit more curvature just to kind of exaggerate it. So, um, so now does this slope, does that slope equal somewhere within the interval. Well, my picture says it will, but let's see if we can prove it mathematically and find the value. So f of 3 is going to be root 2. f of 1 is going to be 0. Am I going to get a value of root 2 over 2 for somewhere in this interval if I take the derivative? Can I solve for that point? So let's work on this side. I'm going to take the derivative of the function. And that'll be 1 over 2 root x minus 1. I'm going to set that equal to um, what, uh, what I found when I did the slope between the endpoints. So I have root 2 over 2 equals 1 over 2 
root x minus 1. Uh, I'll cancel the 2's out because they, they divide out. Um, I'm going to cross multiply. I'll have root x minus 1 equals times root 2 equals 1. I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to have 2 times x minus 1 being multiplied equals 1. I'll distribute the 2. Now I'm going to solve. I'm going to have 2x equals 3. This is coming up over here. And x equals 3 over 2. So um, solving for this shows that uh, at 3 halves, which will be about, uh, well, if this were in scale, that would be better. But it shows that somewhere in the interval at 3 halves, uh, I have a point that does match. Well, let's take a look. We'll use Desmos to verify this. So let me get Desmos out. Um, I'm just going to start up my browser. And I'll turn Desmos on. I'm already on Desmos, of course. Um, so let me put in the function f of x equals the square root of x minus 1. And I'm going to limit the domain um, between 0 and, I'm sorry, it should be between 1 and 3. So, it should be minus. I need to zoom out so we can see that better. Oh, there we go. And that was kind of what I had a hand sketch of. So we're looking for, we found the slope was going to be um, uh, root 2. Let me look back at the thing. We said the slope was going to be root 2 over 2. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to generate an equation of a line. y equals uh, Okay, and then I'm going to put plus b, so that's like a parameter. So I'm going to um, just lower the value until we see where we see it looks like it's about tangent and maybe a little bit more. Okay, so that looks like it's about tangent. I'll prove that point. It looks about 1.5. Uh, we said about 3 halves. So there you go. Look at that. So. We've shown that we've solved for that point on the interior using the mean value theorem. I hope this video has helped you understand um, what to, how to, how to use the mean value theorem to, sat, to, to at least check to see if this hypothesis works. And um, I look forward to hearing your comments uh, or reading your comments on this video. Thank you.